Hey everyone. Welcome to um, um, let's bring ourselves together on our mat with our three arms together. So bringing your hands to heart centre, thumbs against your heart, hands in prayer pose, let's inhale for our three arms. Oh. Earth into our calves, lifting our kneecaps, engaging our thighs, bringing our belly in, tightening our core slightly, ribs and hips lengthened but not flaring out through the ribs, shoulders down our back, long neck, and standing with the crown of our head reaching up towards the sky. So Tandasana itself is a really strong, firm, fast, slow, deep exhale out through the nose. Gently closing the lips. Keep the eyes closed down. And with each deep inhale into the belly, try and really draw in energy of the breath. And then as you exhale, Try and soften the body. Don't lose control of your tendasana posture, but just soften everything through your body. Inhale the energy. Exhale, soften and ease. So when we get into our poses, we can also do this sort of deep breathing. So inhale, the energy to hold the postures, particularly any challenging postures. And exhale, just ease and soften into whatever asana or pose feels like for you. A couple more breaths here. On our next inhale, we're going to circles with our arms out to the side and up overhead and reach as tall as we can with our fingers. Staying with our arms above our head. Continue those big deep breaths. After our next inhale, as we exhale, we're going to lean over to one side. So into a lateral stretch, stretching through the side body. And then as we expand our lungs with that inhalation, just feel all the little fibres between your rib cage open and spread, all the little muscles, the connective tissue. Things we don't often notice as we take our regular breaths. And then on our next inhale, bring our hands to centre and exhale over to the other side for a few breaths. Reaching those fingertips up and away as far as we can. On our next inhalation, come back to centre. Bring our hands down into a cactus shape. Spread our legs wide, toes pointing out as wide as we can. And then bend our knees, drop our tailbone towards the floor into moon pose, moon flower pose. Then we're going to inhale, straighten our legs, reach our hands tall overhead, exhale, lower down, draw in our belly, shoulder blades pulling down our back, inhale, up we come. Exhale, lower, moon flower pose. Inhale, exhale down. And then watching if you need to, we're going into sunflower, inhale our way up, exhale, Bend at the hips, hinge forward, swoop the arms down to the floor, keep the eyes, head above the heart, above the hips, and then inhale our way up. Exhale, bend the knees, bend the bottom back, hinge at the hips, inhale our way up. So I'll just go side on. A straight spine, hinge at the hips. Sunflower. Really, really 
reaching out. We can even look overhead. Circle those arms. Beautiful. Big sweeping movements. Just bend the knees to wherever's comfortable. You don't have to come all the way down. Bring our hands down through heart centre and then by our side. Making our way to the front end of your mat, either end, one foot lengths behind the short end of your mat. We're going into our Surya, Surya Namaskara. I'll have the, our sun salutes, our sun salutations. So if you're not familiar with them, um, please watch the first one. Otherwise, join in for Sun Salute A. Standing tall in Chandasana. Feet hip width apart. Inhale, our arms over our head. Exhale, circle the arms around to the side. Hang forward in forward fold. Inhale, raise our chest parallel to the floor. Hands on the knees, thighs or shins. Exhale, forward fold. Step back into a plank. Drop the knees if necessary, lower down, chaturanga. All the way to the floor for Bhujanasana or Cobra Pose. Chest rises as you inhale. Shoulders are pulled down your back, elbows by your side. Push back, downward facing dog. Downward dog. At home, Mukha Savasana. Push away through the five knuckles of each hand. Draw the tailbone up into the air. Pull the belly in. Backs of the thighs turning slight, with the inner thighs turning slightly towards the back of the room. Drawing the back of th the thighs towards the back of the room. And nice deep breaths here. You can take a little bit of movement, heels up and down. Hips from side to side. Whatever feels good for you in your first downward dog. At home, Mukha Savasana. Walk the feet up between the hands. Inhale, raise the chest. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, bend the knees, circle sweep the arms above the head. And down through heart centre. Hands by the side. One more, Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, hands above head. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, raise the chest, Udwa Uttanasana. Exhale, hands to floor. Step or jump back into a plank or a modified plank. Lower the chest towards the ground, all the way to cobra, or flip the toes under for upward facing dog. Come back to down dog. So it's your choice whether you go all the way down to the ground after chaturanga into cobra, or you flip your toes and keep your knees and thighs off the ground. Pushing up through the arms. You can step forward, feet between the hands, or look forward, bend the knees and lightly jump forward. Inhale, raise the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, so bring the arms above the head. Exhale, down through heart centre. Sun salute B, very similar, but we add in a couple of warriors. Upward facing dog or down, or cobra. Downward dog. Right leg steps through, next to the right hand. Drop the back leg to you. Inhale, our arms over our head. Our first warrior one. Hands to the floor. Chaturanga, step back, plank, knees to the ground if needed, all the way to the ground for cobra or upward facing dog. 
downward dog. Left leg steps forward by the left hand. Drop the right heel down to the mat. Inhale, come up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the floor. Third chaturanga. Lower down. Upward facing dog. Flip the toes. Downward dog. Stay here. Catch your breath. Jump the feet lightly between the hands. Inhale, raise the chest. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, bring the arms forward, sit back, chair pose, Uttanasana. Holding chair pose. You need to wriggle the um, balls of the feet together. The heels can be slightly apart and push the knees together. Give a little bit more stability. Can't bring them together, that's okay. Bring the arms down into our moonflower arms, so our cactus pose. Sit a little deeper if you can. Big inhale, and as you exhale, twist to one side from the waist. Keep the hips facing forward. Back to centre, twist the other side. Back to centre. Forward fold. Inhale, raise your chest. Exhale, step back, chaturanga. Going for that. The sun salute again. Upward facing dog or cobra. Downward dog. Right foot steps forward. Drop the back. Left heel. Inhale, the arms up. Warrior one. Bring our arms down into the moonflower cactus pose. Twist one way towards the back leg. Come back to facing front. Twist the other way. Back to front. Hands to the floor. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Downward dog. Left foot steps forward. Drop the right heel. Inhale our arms above our head. Warrior one. Bring our arms down into cactus pose. Twist to your back leg. Come back to centre. Twist the other way. Back to centre. Arms to the floor. Step back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Down dog. Just having a breather here in Downward Dog is an opportunity to either stay in Downward Dog or rest down into Child's Pose. Knees apart, bottom towards the heels. Always an option any time during the, pro the class is to drop back into Child's Pose. It's a pose in itself or it is a resting position. If there's some sort of Asana that you find too difficult, just drop into child's pose. Or stay in downward dog. Okay, walking or jumping those feet up between our hands. Inhale, chest lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming up into our chair pose. And then straightening our legs, bringing our hands to heart centre. Good job. Okay, we're going into our pyramid. So what we'll get you to do is have your left foot at the top end of your mat and step your right foot back, not quite as far as you would with um, uh, warrior pose, maybe a little bit shorter and try and bring your back toes facing more towards the short edge of your mat or your front foot. If you need it turning out for stability, that's okay. 
From here we're straightening our front leg. So we've made a triangle with our legs as much as we can. We're keeping our hips square to the short end, edge of the front of the mat. From there I want you to lengthen the spine and then like when we swan dive I want you to hinge forward at the hips, straight spine. Hands on hips. Just go to where it's comfortable and then take another inhale. And as you exhale, you can slide your hands down your front leg without putting any pressure on that front leg and fold forward. If you find you're too wobbly, bring the, the right hand off onto the mat or onto a block for balance. But if you can just rest the both hands gently on the front leg for pyramid pose. And just use your breath as we started the session, inhaling for energy, exhaling for softening and easing down into that fold. Next inhale, we're going to rise up halfway. Bring our hands to our hips. Take another inhalation and come all the way up. And then join our feet back together at the front of the mat. And then we're going to step our left foot back. I'll just change the ends of my mat for the ease of um, camera. So we're going to step our left foot back this time, that moderate size step. Try and point, point the toes generally to the short edge of the front of the mat, hips square to the mat, and then lengthen the spine, fold forward, forward as we exhale. Come halfway, inhale again, exhale, soften as far as we can down for our fold, resting our hands lightly on that front leg. Take an inhale, bring the chest up and our hands to our hips. Inhale again and come all the way to standing. And then step both feet together at the top end of your mat. Okay, we're going to go into our warrior series. So come together at the top of your mat. We're going to inhale, arms up over our head. Exhale, swan dive forward. Hands to the floor, step your left foot back, drop the heel to the floor, inhale yourself up into warrior one. Warrior one, we've got our front right knee over our front ankle as much as we can, not letting it fall out or twist in, but just whatever feels right for your body. The back heel's on the floor and our back toes are a little bit further forward than our back heel. So Vidrasana A or Warrior One. A slight back bend. If it's too much for your arms to be up in the air, you can bring them down like we had them before, or you could even bring them at heart centre. Big inhalation in and try and soften down into that pose. It's called warrior pose. We need to be strong in this pose. It's quite a, quite a challenging position. Using our leg muscles and our butt muscles, thigh muscles. As you inhale, grow tall and exhale, open out into warrior two. So our arms are extended to the front and back ends of our mat. Shoulders are down, back and butt are like we're up against a wall. So all in the same plane. 
If you're dristy or your gaze over your front middle finger, front knee is bent over that ankle. We'll have a glance down that you're not turning that knee in, keeping it generally lined up under that front arm and over that front ankle. So warrior two, Vidrasana B. salutations to warm our body up to then hold our poses for now and for a little bit longer. So hang in there. Feel those arms really working. One more inhale. Flip the front hand, palm up and then reach that front right hand up over the head, dropping the left hand, sliding it down our back leg, reaching back over our head for reverse warrior. Mentally think what that front knee is doing. Don't let it fall and turn in. Try and keep it positioned above that front knee, that ankle. You can look up at that top hand if you feel okay or look down towards your back foot or the floor. Like we started off in our Tandasana stretch over here, we're starting to really feel this side body, our right chest open. back into our warrior two position. Start to straighten that front leg, take the left hip backwards, reaching forward with that front hand and then lowering the right hand down towards our straight front leg. Left hand coming up towards the sky for our trikonasana, our triangle pose. So similar to pyramid but probably a slightly bigger stance. Both legs, legs straight, but not super locked out. Don't hyperextend the back of that knee. This hand resting anywhere it can reach down on that shin. There's nothing special about reaching it all the way to the foot. Just come to where you can. Again, we're trying to keep our left shoulder away from our left ear and keep that shoulder blade, that left shoulder blade back against that imaginary wall behind us. Gaze can be looking up at the sky or down at the floor. However, your neck may feel comfortable or your balance may feel better one way or the other. Are you trying to find some comfort in this beautiful pose? Bring our left arm down to the floor near our front foot, keeping our front leg straight. Now that left hand may need to be on a block or a book if you've got one. Bring it in beside that right foot. Lengthen the spine up halfway, head towards the front of the mat. So a long straight spine. And then we're going to open our right arm up to the sky, twisting towards our right. So we're getting a revolved triangle now. Pushing but letting it gently fall down towards the mat for our 
three-legged dog. Let's bring that right knee in towards the chest, step it forward between our hands, lift our left foot off the mat and join our right foot at the front and hang in forward fold. Just gathering our breath here before we go into our other side. So bend the knees, bring the arms above our head, standing tall. And then bring our hands down through heart centre, letting them rest at heart centre for a moment while we take a few breaths. Lifting our hands down by our sides. And then preparing for our other side. Inhale, raise our arms above our head. Exhale, forward fold. Stepping our right foot back this time in a long warrior stance, dropping the right heel. As we glance down, our front left heel is in line with the arch or even the heel of the back foot. Inhale, raise our arms up into warrior one position, Udrasana A. Just try and feel all four corners of that front foot. Feeling the foundations there onto the mat. And then see if we can feel the outer edge of our back foot as much as the inside edge of our back foot all working towards the ground. From Vidrasana A, we're going to exhale our way into Vidrasana B. Warrior two position. Next inhale, flip the front hand, reach it up and over into our reverse warrior. to worry too. Start to straighten your front left leg, reaching forward with that front left hand and then lowering that front arm towards our left leg, right arm coming up into the sky for our Trikonasana. hand down to the floor. Again, place it on the mat or on a block. Keeping our front leg fairly straight, open our left arm up into the air, lengthen our 
torso as we do our twist. So twisting in the opposite direction to our triangle before. hand down to the mat, removing your block if need be, hands framing the front foot, turn the back heel off the mat and then step your left leg all the way back and up into three legged dog, lifting it up into the sky behind you. into your elbows if you like here and have a rock from side to side. A rock slightly forward and back into the balls and back into the heels of the feet. And then weight into the right hand side of the right foot and then the left hand side of the left foot. So swaying from side to side, moving the body weight across both feet. And then just centre yourself in the middle and see if you can hang and release a little bit more through the backs of those legs and your spine. And really let the crown of the head just let gravity take it towards the earth. the hands to the mat, we're going to go into a standing split. So take your weight into your left leg and then bend, lift the right heel off the mat and then take the right leg up in the air behind you as far as you can into a standing split. Bring that foot down to the ground. Take the weight into the right foot and lift the left leg up into the air for your standing split. Left foot down. Just going to repeat that on each side. So right foot in the air. This time if you'd like to grab behind the left ankle with your left hand just to Challenge your balance a little bit more. But if you're safer with both hands on the ground, leave them there. And lower the right leg. Lifting the left leg again. And again, your option to grab the right ankle with your right hand. Bend the knees a lot and inhale our way up to standing. And hands to heart center. Shut down the eyes for a moment, just regroup your breath. Gather a couple of blocks if you 
have them or books and just place them in front of you. So we're just placing our hands on our, on our hips. My feet are about two and a half to three feet apart. And then I'm just going to lower myself down into a squat. Now slowly does it. Some, some of you may not lower the bottom too much because your knee, uh, knee anatomy or knee difficulties. So just see how you go. Certainly there's no, uh, absolutely no requirement to get any pain. If you're getting pain, come out of the squat. But if you can then lower the elbows down to the thighs and sink the bottom to the floor, I need to lean on my blocks for a little one while till my knees get um, comfortable with my pose. And then I can actually release them and bring my hands to heart centre using my elbows to push my elbow, my knees apart a little bit. So I'm sitting right down in my goddess's squat. <laughs> um, but you might find that you're, you know, very upright and there's no problems. It's probably a lot easier um, down here than those that are holding their weight up high. So well done. more breaths here. Now, uh, some of you may be able to just come to a standing from that position, release the hands and just push straight up. I require my blocks and a little bit of a lean forward and a push up to come to standing. The next um, pose we're going to do, and if you don't know how to do it, just watch um, for a moment. I have my feet uh, nearly mats width apart, and I'm just going to fold forward, straight legs until my hands are on the floor. Then bending my knees slightly, I'm going to rest my hands on the floor with my thumbs only a couple of inches apart. Now we're aiming for the crow pose, so with my legs as straight as possible, I'm going to bring my knees in behind my, into my armpits, or some people take them to the outside of their upper arms. My gaze is forward of the mat, about one foot ahead of my hands. And then drawing in my belly, I'm resting myself as much as I can on the arms. From there, we can then attempt to lift one foot off the ground at a time, or if you are um, practiced at doing crow, you may be able to lift both feet off the mat. Get all that belly in. This is an arm strengthener, obviously. Have your practice at home. If you're new at it and frightened, there's, this is your opportunity to enjoy beautiful child's pose. But for those that would like to have another couple of attempts, and then we'll get everybody to make their way down onto their bottom. into our butterfly. So we have our soles of our feet together and our knees apart. And then I'm just getting you to walk your upper body backwards until you can rest down on your elbows. Now, depending on your hip mobility and anatomy, your feet may be quite a long way away from you, or you may be able to bring them closer to your bottom and then let Gravity draw the knees out to the sides and towards the floor. So just enjoying butterfly in a reclined position for a moment. Trying to open up these hips. If 
giving our wrists a rest at the moment because we're going to come up into our incline plank. We're going to be resting on our wrists. Drawing those knees together and extending our legs, let's come back up into a sitting position. We have straight legs and then we have our hands underneath our shoulders in whichever way our fingers want to face, whatever's comfortable for you, mine are pointing towards the bottom. And then it's a matter of lifting up your bottom and making a straight line from toes to, to, to upper chest. Now, if that is too strong for you, bend the knees, bring the feet closer to the bottom and lift the hips for a tabletop type position. Let's try and hold our plank for quite a while, a few breaths. And gradually lower the bottom to the floor. Bring our arms forward and just give the little wrists a little gentle swivel. We'll get our, make our way over onto our knees now. I'm just going to place a small pillow underneath my um, left knee. So we are going to extend our left arm and our right leg behind us for spinal balance. Now option one is stay in that position. If it's too much to have the arm up, do the leg, then drop the knee and do the arm. But if you can, opposite leg and arm out in front of you. And then if you can, bend your right foot towards your left side and see if you can grab it with your left hand. And then lift and push back that right foot. Twisting the gaze back over the left shoulder. A couple more breaths here. And then gently release down onto the mat onto all fours. I'm just going to place a pillow under my right knee now. If anyone here has sensitive knees, knee issues. And now I'm taking my left leg back and my right arm forward. Option one. Option two, reach behind with our right arm, grab our left foot, looking back and up at that back left foot. Really big deep breaths here. Try and push that left foot up and away, lifting that knee up fairly high. The foot pushing away is drawing back that right hand and shoulder. And then gently release down onto the mat. And we'll make our way back onto our bottoms. And then gradually lower our way down onto, the, onto our back, having our knees bent and feet on the floor for our bridge. So bridge is another back bend. So hands just resting on the floor beside us. We're going to Lift our hips up into the air. Our knees and ankles are hip width apart. Lifting our hips as high as we can while not um, causing any pain or discomfort in our lower back. So go to where your back wants you to go. If you are familiar or are able to, roll the shoulders under the back. Clasping the hands together and you'll get a little bit more opening through the chest and the hips. A 
We're going to stay like this in bridge for quite a few breaths. So those that have wheel in their practice, you may lower down and then here's your opportunity to do the wheel. Which I haven't done for quite a while. I will have an attempt. I won't teach it online because I think you need better instruction than what you can see in this video. ready all of you can come down onto your back we're just going to bring our knees into our chest now gently um, hug underneath our knees so between our calves and the back of our knees we just have a little rock here And then if you just let release the right leg down flat along the mat, I want you to draw the left knee in as close to your chest as you can. So we're getting a real compression in this left hip. So really squeeze it in. Then releasing your left leg down onto the mat, bring your right knee into the chest and do the same. Compress it in, squeeze it in nicely against that chest. Going to butterfly again, so releasing that leg out, bring the soles of our feet together. If you need to pop a little pillow, it's laying too far back against the mat. Just draw the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall back to the side. Shut down the eyes and take quite a few deep breaths here. Really enjoying the opening hips we will be going from here into Shavasana so if you're gradually lengthening out those legs unless you would like to stay in butterfly for your shamasana straighten the legs out point the toes to the four, to the corners of the mat so open the legs by your side palms up and relaxed or if you're more comfortable resting them on your tummy feel free so let's make our way into shavasana your final asana for the night. Close down your eyes gently. Starting down at our feet, we're going to scan our body now. Through your legs, your calves, your kneecaps, your thighs. And just see if we can make those muscles heavy and relaxed towards the earth. You need to give them a bit of a shuffle or a fidget or a wriggle to then rest them. Come up 
can feel the buttocks pressing down on the mat. Make sure you feel like you're on the mat, but start to wear if you feel the back is touching the back, middle to upper back. Wriggle those shoulder blades around until you can really relax them down towards the floor. Scan your shoulders, make sure you haven't got them raised up around your ears or your chin. Wiggle them around and let them sink down and away from your head. Feel where your arms rest upon the floor or on your belly. And then just lift your head gently up, lengthen the back of your neck and rest it down again. And let the heaviness of your head just melt down upon the floor. So our body should be feeling quite languid now. Just take a few deep breaths and really feel your belly. And as you exhale, just notice how your belly the mat softens, sinks, and with each inhalation and exhalation, it actually just feel that sinking and enjoy the next few minutes of Shavasana, looking inward. Gazing behind your eyes or between your eyes at your third eye between your forehead, between your eyebrows. Anywhere that you can consciously bring yourself inside your body. While you enjoy the relaxation of Shavasana. two deep breaths. Let your breath bring you back to feel your body. Side. 
And when you feel ready, bringing yourself up to a seated position. Keep your eyes closed down. And bring your hands to heart centre. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight with our yoga. Hope you enjoyed our session. Please feel free to make a comment or a like if you joined us tonight, especially you, Richard. Let's conclude with one om and three shanties for peace. So inhale for om. together. Namaste everyone. So tomorrow night we have yin yoga at the earlier time of 4pm. So if anyone has become very used to our 5pm Thursday night yin yoga, don't panic. It's live at 4 but it will be uploaded um, probably by about quarter past 5. So you can always join in still and just play our uploaded video if you